Now, before Donald Trump put it on many hats, made in China, there was a time in history when America really was great. It was one of the, if not the most richest country in the world. So join me as we take a trip through time, back to the roaring 20s, when Americans had the eye of the tiger, were fighters, champions, and like lions. In this edition of The Classroom, we'll cover the following topics, isolationism, the economic boom, and the roaring 20s. And at the same time, we're gonna make connections between the global context of fairness and development, the concepts of equality, wealth, and equity. And furthermore, we're gonna identify the key ideas, the key theories, the perspectives, and the implications related to that time in America's wonderful, glorious history. Isolationism. The American policy was to isolate itself from the European squabbles after World War I. And this meant that Congress voted down the Treaty of Versailles and the Congress of Vienna, leading to America to turn its back on Europe for 20 years. Within that 20 years, America grew economically, they grew richer, and they were one of the most powerful nations in the world. Isolationism is the idea that a country can be better by ignoring outside trade with other countries and focusing and protecting its own industries. The idea of isolationism is the complete opposite of globalization, which is the concept which many of us are far more familiar with in today's world. The economic boom had three main causes. Number one was the industrial strength of the United States of America. Number two was World War I. And number three were the Republican Party policies. In terms of the industrial strength of America, America at that time was so rich in natural resources that it didn't need to go around invading different countries and stealing their oil because it had plenty of its own. Furthermore, it was able to create huge steel, had huge coal deposits, and therefore, by embracing the new technology of uh, machinery, was able to create cars, telephones, and exploit the benefits of electricity. The second factor would be the World War I. Um, because the Americans joined World War I late, they didn't face the same economic hardships as the British, the French, or the Germans. So therefore, came out of World War I in a much better financial position than the others. And in terms of the third factor, the Republican Party policies, there were four main policies um, which impacted the economic growth. And these policies are called political theories. The Republican Party's political theories are the same then as they are today. And those are, we should take a laissez-faire approach to running the country, which basically means that there should be a small government and that it should not interfere in the daily lives of ordinary American citizens and that things like the economy just run its course. The second aspect of the Republican Party policy was the introduction of tariffs. And with those tariffs, the tariffs were against other imports from other countries. So if you wanted to buy a car from, say, Great Britain, and trust me, it would be beautiful, um, then you would have to pay more tax on that car because it's foreign. And the whole purpose of the tariffs was to make sure that Americans bought American goods. Now the issue with that was that once the Europeans realised that their goods were being taxed, they also introduced taxes against American goods as well. The third uh, Republican policy here would be low taxation. And the whole idea is that if you tax people less, they have more money in their pockets, which means they're going to spend more money in the economy buying things and everything else like that. And therefore that in turn will ensure that the economy continues to grow. However, the reality of that idea was that it mainly benefited the rich and not so much the poor sections of society. The fourth aspect of the Republican policy was the trusts. And the trust was the creation of super corporations which were in charge of certain aspects of the of industry. And the government didn't get involved with it because they believed the captains of the industry would know what they needed to do and therefore left them pretty much to themselves. So what we would call you know, a deregulated system. Fortunately, the economic boom wasn't great for everybody. And uh, you know, particularly workers from old industries whereby they had been replaced through um, machinery, um, or that is simple, the whole industry basically being replaced by the innovation of the new technology, these workers face mass unemployment. Farmers themselves uh, lost 
billions of pounds in the 1920s because they were they had an oversurplus of goods, not enough people to buy it, and therefore what they had produced was wasted because the European tariffs meant that they couldn't actually export it either. So lots of farmers lost their jobs, and many people became poor, particularly in the rural areas. And also in the 1920s, during the economic boom, um, wages did not increase at the same rate as factory profits. So you have owners of companies and factories earning huge amounts, whereas the average ordinary job worker, their salary is not increasing at the same rate. So you're seeing this huge gap in the distribution of wealth between the rich and the poor sections of society. The Roaring Twenties was kind of classed as one long Great Gatsby party. And we're going to look at six key elements here of the Roaring Twenties. Number one, the growth in cities. Number two, the rise in entertainment. Number three, the car. Number four, women in the 1920s. Number five, prejudices and intolerance. And number six, finding prohibition. In the 1920s, for the first time, there were more people living in cities or urban sections of society than there were living in the countryside or rural areas in America. And one of the reasons for this change and the movement and the migration of individuals to these cities was that they were looking for jobs because they lost their jobs in the rural areas. This did mean you did have a lot of unskilled workers flooding into the cities looking for a better chance. In terms of entertainment in the 1920s, there was a huge boom in you know, a range of entertainment. The radio was born, um, jazz music was very popular, people like the dance for Charleston, um, you've got a rise in sport and baseball and boxing, um, and in cinema, Hollywood was created. In terms of the car, the car brought a lot of social mobility. Um, it allowed people to have their independence, it allowed people to have their freedoms, and it allowed the movement of individuals from the rural areas to the urban areas. Moving on to the role of women in the 1920s. Um, before the 1920s, the role of women was that of a very conservative individual. They had to dress very conservatively, they had to be very polite, and generally that was the role of women at that point in time. They didn't have the right to vote. Then after World War I, um, women's rights began to change ever so slowly and slightly. Um, you had 10 million women were in the workforce by 1929. The car along with the domestic appliances such as the Hoover and the washing machine made women's chores a lot easier to do. The women that moved to the cities were able to smoke, they were able to drink, they were able to wear more risky clothing as it would have been known as back in the day. Therefore, you do see a gradual change in how society accepted and allowed women to behave in private and in public. However, there were limitations to that, and obviously women got paid less than men, um, so no change there then, if you look at today's world. And women were not allowed to be politicians, so no Hillary Clinton in the 1920s. In the 1910s, there were about 8 million immigrants in the United States of America. And the immigrants came from a range of areas in Europe. You had some from the northwest of Europe, which were generally the Irish and British or the Germans, and they were generally well accepted in America. And America was known as a melting pot of immigrants, whereby immigrants would migrate to America for the hope and the search of a better life, and they would then assimilate into the American culture. Um, on top of that, you had the movement of Eastern Europe and Southeastern Europe being immigrants, which were not very well liked within the American culture. And even below that, you had the Mexican immigrants and Black Americans who were even further disliked um, in terms of the social hierarchy between immigrants in America during the 1920s. Furthermore, you had the Ku Klux Klan, which was a white supremacist group, and the Ku Klux Klan grew in political influence during the 1920s. And black Americans faced huge levels of poverty, disproportionate to white Americans. They weren't able to afford good housing, they weren't given access to good education, and they were barred from certain jobs. So this led to a certain change in movement between um, the black community, so they started a black capitalist movement in the North America to try and um, encourage black Americans to start owning businesses so that they could provide for themselves and their families. With the birth of jazz music and the entertainment industry were certain prominent black American individuals who uh, were admired and revered in society. But again, those changes you know, were not enough and weren't big enough to have a lasting and real impact on the majority of black American 
Americans who faced lots of discrimination and segregation and lynching by mobs just because of the colour of their skin. So again what we can see here in terms of equality, um, we can see a huge disparity in America in the 1920s and the disparity is based on either your nationality or your colour of your skin. Prohibition was brought about by the temperance movement from the rural sections of America and the temperance movement were usually devout Christians who believed that alcohol was the spawn of the devil and would ruin family life um, and ruin the fabric of American society as they knew it. So they put pressure on state legislators to ban alcohol and eventually this moved from a state movement to a national movement and alcohol was banned by the American government. However, what this meant was if you ban something, there are always people who will find the legal way to have the same thing. And this led to a rise of gangsterism in America who flooded the market with bootleg alcohol and people were still able to break the law. Now for those that were arrested, um, they didn't always go to court because the police were easily bribed by the gangsters or the judges were easily bribed by the gangsters and sometimes there wasn't enough police to maintain and to reinforce the situation to prevent the illegal selling of alcohol. Now during the prohibition alcohol consumption did decrease um, but overall it proved an effective and an ineffective method of um, improving the livelihood of society and the idea of making Maybe illegal to drink alcohol um, was meant to benefit society, but overall it made society more lawless because you had the rise in gangsters and you had judges in the judicial system becoming corrupt. So therefore it was a failed idea if you look at it from the huge big picture. But the local context of fairness and development, we can see that when we look at the 1920s, um, farmers didn't benefit from the Roaring Twenties, um, women were not treated equally, um, there was prejudice and intolerance towards the black Americans and Hispanic Americans and foreigners. Um, there was corruption of the police force and the judicial system. So if you're looking at fairness and the Roaring Twenties, then you're not going to see much of it if you have, if you were a farmer or if you were a black American or if you were uh, an immigrant. However, if you were a rich individual based on new wealth, then you will say it was totally fair because you were able to put your hard work and your effort into your industry and make a profit. And this leads us on to development. The Roaring Twenties did see the development of the economy, it did see new industries being born and new technologies being created, it saw a change in the social culture of America in terms of entertainment with the radio, with jazz, with sport, um, with the advent of cinema. So we can say there was lots of development in the social areas of the 1920s and also you have social mobility being developed as well where people were able at a certain point to rise above themselves and to pull them up by their bootstraps as the great Gatsby did in uh, the Gatsby novel. If we're looking at perspectives and implications, from a political perspective, you can say that the Roaring Twenties were a success. The um, political ideas and theories of the American government at that time allowed and created the platform and the foundations for the economic boom. Um, if you look at it economically, um, and the United States of America became one of the richest countries in the world. If you're looking at it socially, then you have to look at it from two different perspectives. If you're looking at it from the, the wealthy perspective, then you're going to say that the Roaring Twenties was a great time. If you're looking at it from a poorer perspective, such as an, an employee or a worker or a farmer or somebody who, who is unemployed, then you're going to say it was a bad time for them. If you're looking at it from a gangster's point of view, you're going to also say that it's a good time for you as well because you were able to bribe the police and to make lots of money selling um, illegal alcohol and whatnot. Because looking at it from a technological point of view, the development that we saw during the 1920s is phenomenal. You have the advent of the car, you have mechanization in the factories, um, you have the radio, um, cinema, new technologies in there. So all that brings a sense of enjoyment and fun for the people of the 1920s. But ultimately, it all depends whether you were rich or whether you were poor in terms of whether the Roaring Twenties were that good for you.